Hello and welcome to a short video on how to create your Poetry Out Loud presentation and turn it into a video. First I'd like to offer some advice about creating slides. If you always choose to create a blank slide then you won't have to worry about that text being in the background. You're probably going to choose your own texts and fonts and colors. I also choose the black color scheme because I think it's easier to put pictures on top of. I'm just going to highlight my text here for a second so I can see it. That's pretty ugly, but I'll change it later. So the next thing I'm going to do is go find the image that I'm going to associate with the first line of the poem. I've done a Google image search for uh, Black Knight, and then I use the search tools and usage rights menus to choose labeled for reuse. You could also use labeled for non-commercial use. I'm going to be pretty obvious about my selections here. Please be more thoughtful about the images you choose for your poem. As you can see, you do find a variety of images when you search within Creative Commons or free licensed materials, not just among a normal Google image search. So I like this bridge and I'm going to visit the page of the bridge. And I see that it's actually in the public domain, which means technically I do not have to cite it. But because my teacher expects me to cite the images I use, I'm going to use my EasyBib uh, extension and I'm going to create a new project and cite on, click the Cite on EasyBib menu item. Now this citation looks pretty good but there is some information missing that I can find on the website. For example the author. Um, I can give the username of the person who uploaded the image which is Bob Teshi or something similar to that. Um, then I can also scroll down and look to see if I can find the date that it was electronically published. And you can see that it was created on April 12th, 2014 and uploaded on July 3rd. So that I put that information in and I save that citation. Then I return to the image, right click and choose copy image address and return to my presentation, clicking on the insert menu, choosing image, choosing by URL and pasting that URL into the space. Then my image appears on the screen. Now it's in front of my text, so I'm going to click on the Arrange menu and choose Send to Back so that it's behind the text that I had originally placed on the slide. Finally, I'm going to fix the text so that it's not as ugly by changing the font to something that seems appropriate for the content and changing the color and size as well so that it fits very well on the slide and stands out and is very easily read. Okay, so here's another example, a little more quickly. I searched rain using the same search parameters as before, images that are allowed for reuse only. I find the image I want and I click on it. Then I click on view page so that I can see the page that it's on. Again, this one is copyright free, but I still want to cite it. So I go to my EasyBib extension and I fill in the information that I can find on the page. In this case, I actually find a photo photographer's first and last name, so I enter those in. And I find the date that the picture was taken, so I'm going to use that as well, even though it's not the date it was electronically published. I also inserted the publisher. Then I'm going to copy the image URL and insert it into my presentation, and then manipulate my text so that I think it looks nice and makes sense for the poem. The final slide of my presentation is going to be my bibliography. We're not using a works cited for this because we're not citing sources in text. We are referencing that we found these images and this poem in these places. That's what the bibliography is for this. So I went to EasyBib, I clicked on the project that this is, and then I uh, check the citations I want and I export the citations to copy and paste. So all I have to do is copy and paste them and put them into my bibliography page. When you're ready to record, go to a quiet place. Open up the QuickTime app and then to record, right click on the app in your, in your dock and then choose new screen recording. Click on the little arrow next to the recording button to make sure that your microphone is turned on. Then when you're ready to record, click on the recording button. Click to record full screen and then click on the present icon so that you can show it full screen. Read through your slides using the same emotion that you will read in your live performances. 
If you make mistakes, don't stop the recording and start completely from scratch. Just pause and then start speaking again. When you reach the end of your presentation, allow the bibliography to remain on the screen for a few seconds. Then click the stop icon in the menu bar at the top of your screen. Give your project a good name and click save. We will use iMovie to edit and share your final video. Click on import and then choose to create a new event and I called mine Poetry Out Loud, P-O-L. Then find the video that you recorded using QuickTime and import that video. I have several pieces to my video because I'm actually creating a demonstration with this. So I've selected multiple files and then I click import to bring them into my screen. Then I click on create, no theme. I don't like to use themes because when I'm editing something like this, I don't want iMovie adding transitions when I cut pieces of my video away um, because sometimes I'm just trying to delete a, a mistake that I made while speaking. You're familiar with iMovie already, so I'm only going to provide a couple of tips specific to this project for the rest of this demonstration. I'm wearing headphones, so as I go over my waveforms here, you won't be able to hear, but I can hear, so I can see hear what I'm editing. All right, I recommend using headphones when you're listening to yourself. Um, it just makes it easier to do some of your, of your editing. Also, I recommend that you have this waveform wave visible. Uh, you can turn that on by clicking on the film icon here and choosing show waveform. That way I can see where I have large, large blocks of silence where I'm sure I forgot what I was supposed to say or I'm waiting to transition to the next slide. And those are the things we want to cut out. So I'm just going to click and actually here at the beginning that, that part where I went to full screen, I also want to cut that off. So um, I click on the segment that I want to delete, uh, want to change. So it's highlighted in yellow. And then I left, leave the marker at the place I want to trim. Then I can either right click and choose split clip, or I can use command B. And that's what I usually do. So I take off this part at the beginning there, where there's no speaking and it's just not necessary. And I just delete that with the delete key. Now again, here is where I say that the, the line from the poem, and then there's again another very long blank pause. So I'm just going to again click on the, the clip, use Command B to trim, use Command B in this section, and then just delete that part out. Then I can listen. Oh, I made a mistake here. So I, after I made the mistake, I had a pause, I tried again, and I realized I made the same mistake, and then I started over one last time. So I'm actually going to cut out that whole section right there because I just don't need it. It's wrong. Then again, I'm going to go back and listen. Okay, so again, here at the end where there's the bibliography, we really shouldn't be hearing anything, so I'm actually going to do a little bit more trimming. I'm going to break that there, and then I'm going to break it here delete that section out and then I'm going to say detach audio for this section because although there's not a lot of background noise in there it just doesn't need any audio whatsoever so I delete that out completely and then cut off where I go back to um, my recording space so that I could turn off the recording and I just delete that section out so then your video may look like this where it's lots of little pieces but in the end, they look nice together. There's no big pauses. You have edited, have edited out those um, errors that you made in speaking. While you are manipulating your video, look into the crop feature to determine where the video, where the image looks the best. Now again, I didn't use all my images completely full screen on the presentation so I have this flexibility and I'm actually going to trim this up because I think that looks nicer. This one fit very well. I don't think I need to fix that at all. When you're finished and ready to share your presentation, click on the share icon at the top of the screen and choose YouTube from the options. 
enter your account information if you need to, if you need to log in. If you're having trouble logging in, you can come find Miss Jenny and ask her for help. Please don't put your first and last name in the title of the video. Because we're sharing these on YouTube, there's no reason to put your first and last name out there. You can choose to create the privacy as public, which means that anyone who searches the internet can find it, or you can choose unlisted, so that only the people you share the link with can see the video. Do not use private because then Miss Kendra will not be able to see your video. So I'm leaving public because I don't mind that other people could search and see my video. Then you click next, click publish, and wait. When your video is finished uploading to YouTube, you can go to the YouTube, your YouTube channel so that you can get the link to submit to Miss Kendra. All right, mine is not finished uploading, so I'll have to refresh this page in a few minutes and see if it is. Thank you for watching.